We've seen that the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation gives us a, a little bit of a handle on how to deal with uh, temperature changes and uh, what effect that has on the change in Gibbs energy. So just to remind you, the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation looks something like this. If I take the derivative of a change in Gibbs energy divided by temperature with respect to temperature at constant pressure, and it would give me negative delta H, the enthalpy of the pro enthalpy change for the process over T squared. Now I'm not going to do it in this lesson, but um, I will tell you that you can man mathematically show that this expression is in fact equivalent to the following. If I change this to a derivative of delta G over T with respect to 1 over T at constant pressure, that in fact this would be um, equal to simply delta H. Now why is this important? Well now you can imagine that if you do a physical measurement where you actually measure delta G or delta G over T at several different temperatures, all right, you might get something that looks like this. So here is a function of temperature. Actually I'm going to make this 1 over temperature and this is going to be delta G over temperature because if I graph delta G over 1 over t versus 1 over T all right what I've indicated on this graph um, I'm going to have a curve that uh, for example may look something like this and if I measure at a particular value of the temperature along here the slope that slope is going to give me the enthalpy so this is one way that one could determine the enthalpy change. And, and you may be wondering, well, <laughs> isn't enthalpy easier to measure than delta G? Well, in fact, we can get delta G in a lot of different ways, one of which is electrochemical. So one might do an electrochemistry experiment where the result of that electrochemistry experiment is to uh, provide you with delta G for a process. And from that, you could now derive the enthalpy change for the process. All right, so um, what this means in a greater scheme of things is the following. So I have that delta G with respect to temperature pre uh, at constant pressure is minus S and this is less than zero so that's telling me that this is a decreasing function of temperature. So decreasing with temperature. All right. I also know that this function of entropy with respect to temperature at constant pressure is given by uh, the 1 over T times the constant pressure heat capacity. So this one's getting larger with, time, with temperature. So let's draw what this looks like. Okay, now I'm going to draw this as a function of temperature starting at 0K. All right, now if I start at 0K, the definition of, uh, of the Gibbs energy is going to be the same as the definition of the enthalpy. Okay, because Gibbs energy is the enthalpy minus T times the entropy. Okay, but at 0K, T is 0, so they're both the same. So now what happens? As, in, as temperature increases, I'm going to see G decrease. And it's going to decrease faster and faster as temperature increases because its slope is minus entropy, but the entropy itself is getting larger with temperature. So it's going to increase its slope down. Now, in case you're interested, the enthalpy increases with temperature. It doesn't increase as fast as uh, G decreases. So, in fact, actually I'm kind of drawing delta G in this case and delta H, but the difference between these two curves Really, it represents T delta S. All right, that's the difference between these two curves because we have delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So that's how we can relate all of these things together. Now, I want to talk a little bit more, just briefly, about the change of free energy, of change of Gibbs energy, and I'll make this molar Gibbs energy with respect to pressure at constant temperature. All right, so we've looked first at the variation with temperature at constant pressure, let's look at the opposite. We know that this derivative from uh, our Maxwell relations is just going to be the molar volume, which is a number that's greater than zero. So now, what if I were to integrate this? So what if I were to bring the dp over, so I have a dg, and I want to 
integrate from some point one to some point two, and that's going to be integrating from point one to point two of the molar volume dp. Now, just for uh, convenience, I will write the molar volume as equal to RT over the pressure so that I can now rewrite this as RT times the variation from point 0.1 to point 0.2 of dP over P. Okay, now I could just go ahead and write this out. I mean I know that the result is going to be RT log of P2 over P1, but I want to do something special with this equation, and I'm going to put this in a different color just to emphasize that this is something special. Instead of just taking any old um, pressure 1, pressure 2, and I forgot to close the parentheses there. Instead of taking any old pressure 1, let's let pressure 1 equal 1 bar, okay, which is the standard pressure. And let's say that the constant temperature that we're doing all of this is the standard temperature. All right. So what that will mean now is that this quantity here, which is technically G2 minus G1, will become G at some pressure P, and this is at constant temperature, minus G at both constant pressure and temperature. And that's something we're going to call the standard free energy, or the standard Gibbs energy. So this is at uh, the standard temperature and one bar of pressure, whereas this one is just at the standard temperature and any pressure. All right, so this is going to be equal to this expression, RT log, and now P2 is equal to my arbitrary pressure that I'm highlighting over here, and P1 is one bar. So when I write this this way, that means I would need to express this pressure in, in units of bars. So they'll cancel there, so I'm having a log of a unitless uh, function here. But this whole expression that I've written out here, a little bit awkwardly, but nevertheless, this whole expression here is going to turn out to be an immensely important relationship for us as we go forward, especially as we talk about mixtures, as we talk about phase transitions. This is one that's going to recur a couple of times. Uh, because as we'll see, and I uh, neglected to keep my uh, use of the molar free energy, this molar free energy is a very special function, a very special uh, entity uh, that we're going to be making use of in further studies in this course. So this is just to give you a flavor of how the, free, the Gibbs energy changes with, with temperature uh, decreasing here and with pressure via this very uh, interesting and very useful equation. And we'll see that equation again, so uh, stay tuned.